fine. I know we had some technical issues this morning. So if you are getting this, maybe you'll get it later. Anyways, I um, want to cover just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, if you're coming to this service, you may not know that the other service or the other side was dark and we didn't have anyone over there this morning. Uh, we got robbed last Monday morning at uh, 6.40 in the morning. And uh, they got in, they got out. Uh, before we were able to get the police here. We called the police, but they didn't show up until after the burglars were well and gone. And so we could have taken some, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word for this, some extraordinary steps uh, to get set up on the other side. But our goal is to get to complete and full installation. And our goal is to have that done by the end of the month. And so we didn't want to use any of our bandwidth to try and get up in there if it wasn't going to be permanent. And so, just so you know, if you are a traditional person or sometimes come to that service, that's what's going on. We're doing both services in here for right now. And um, as hard as it's been uh, to deal with all that, and especially Matt dealing with the stress of trying to figure out how we're going to do worship and all that stuff, um, it's also been incredibly encouraging for me because I had some Christian friends not connected with the church who heard about what happened and said, uh, we want to do a fundraiser to cover any expenses that aren't covered by insurance. And so he's putting together a fun run uh, for the end of this month uh, that people can join and be a part of and help support us, which I just, it, it's hard to be on the receiving end of that sometimes, but it just, it just touched my heart. And um, so you'll be hearing more about that. There'll be an opportunity for you to join in the run, maybe an opportunity for you to be a, an aid station person. If you've never been part of a, a running event, they'll have water stations set up about the, every mile mark or so so that the runners can grab water. And so we'll be looking for volunteers to help out with that stuff and make it a great event. Uh, it's still in the planning stages as this all just happened this week. And um, you'll, you'll hear more coming up on that. And then I want to take a moment and address... Uh, these things that we all love to hate. Um, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, uh, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path so their ministry is not discredited. We don't want wearing or not wearing a mask to prevent someone from hearing the good news of Jesus. We want people to come here and feel safe and feel comfortable. And so we're encouraging everyone that is worshiping, other than those that are leading worship, to wear their mask at, at all times just so that people feel comfortable and so that they know what's going on. And I know that there's opinions on all sides about whether it's bad, it's good, whatever. But we want to do this just out of respect uh, for others uh, just during this time as we continue to wait. Uh, up on stage, the people that are leading worship uh, aren't going to be wearing masks so that you can hear them and so it doesn't sound like they're talking into, you know, a muffler. Um, but we're also trying to keep them at a, at a reasonable distance from everyone else in order to keep everyone safe. Uh, so just wanted to kind of update you guys on that. And with that, uh, you can uh, be done with me talking and the band will get us started. You guys get on your feet.
down and you place my feet on the solid ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, pick me up and you turn me around and you place my feet on the solid ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing it again. Cause you pick me up and you turn me around and you place my feet on the solid ground. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
lesson for this morning is from Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your right hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say to the darkness, surely the darkness will hide me and light will become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Those words are supposed to be good news. But sometimes they don't feel like good news. I don't know about you guys, but I don't always feel like I want to be completely known. You have this seeking uh, thing in us that, that just like Adam in the garden, we want to hide, we want to cover up, we're, we're afraid, we're ashamed, we're, we feel guilty. And we're afraid that if somebody truly sees us, sees all of us, that they won't love us. And so we come before God with this insecurity, this, this fear of being fully known and confess it to him, knowing that he sees our hearts. Please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you knowing that you fully and completely see us. We confess our fear. We confess that, that we are afraid, that we are ashamed. And Lord, help us to see these words afresh, to see that you knowing us is a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The psalmist continues, For you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. See, here's the amazing thing, and here's what I think the psalmist was thinking as he penned those last words that I just read. Because after all, this was David who wrote these words. David, the adulterer. David, the murderer. And as he penned these words, he's saying, God, you know me. And at the same time, he's also recognizing God's incredible and complete love for him. It's not as if God loved the false identity of David. No, God loved David. And God said, David, you are a man after my own heart. God loved David as he was, knew everything about him, and still loved him. The same is true of each and every one of us. There is no secret that you have that God doesn't already know. And he loves you still. So much so that he sent Jesus, the very son of God, to take your place, to take your death, to take the penalty that you deserve. And because of that, I get to pronounce the grace of God to each and every one of you. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So then the question is, how are we to live? How are we to live in this world if we are those kind of forgiven and loved people by our God? James writes in chapter 5. It's here he's talking about what it looks like when we love one another, when we live with one another. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let the elders of the church, invite the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. 
Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. In other words, if you're loved and forgiven by God, live in such a way before other people that they can be encouraged and realize that God loves them as well. And Jesus himself models this kind of a life for us. In bearing his soul before his disciples, we read of his most dire moment in Matthew chapter 26. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and his two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he turned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Then he came back. He again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. They returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. We continue by declaring and singing God's praises. We remember that he declares who we say, who you say I am. We're say, talking about God, declaring who we are as his children. I invite you to stand as we sing this together.
Good morning. How are you all today? Ooh, wow. Good morning. All right, I brought my, my friend, the yellow balloon here today, and he is going to represent you and me. And look, we're happy, but maybe I should have started with a little bit of a sad face. Have you ever struggled with friendships a little bit and making connections with people? Or you just think that something must be wrong with you because nobody's reaching out to you, but then maybe you realize that you haven't picked up the phone and called somebody yourself lately. So this is going to represent us, and these little blue sprinkles are going to represent people, okay? Other people, other maybe our friends, our family, uh, co-workers, things like that. And here, can you guys see them? We've got, we've got people, okay? And I've got this little trusty towel here. I was going to, to do this on my own head, but I don't think anybody wants to see this. So this right here, this towel is going to represent us opening up and talking to God and having conversations with him of saying, I, am, I wanna be a good friend or a good neighbor. This is really squeaky. Or I want to um, reach out to people that may be hurting and I haven't really done a good job of reaching out to them myself. And so we ask Jesus, let us be open to those who might need a relationship with me or that I could help out. And so we're going to do this well enough the first service. So we're just gonna really make sure there's a good amount of static there. And look what happens when we talk to God and we say, hey, we want to reach out to others and we want to open up and, and have other people in our lives, we can attract so many other people and then we just rub Jesus all over us, right? What do these other people get to hear about then? What do they see and recognize in our life? Sunday school answer, guys, Jesus, right? They also get to have that understanding of who Jesus is in their lives as well. And so just a little demonstration, just to show you what it can mean when we make sure that we're reaching out to others, what other people get in return. So as we think about that, I'm gonna invite Pastor Brad to come on forward as he shares this amazing message of what we can do in other people's lives when we open up ourselves as well. Thank Thanks, you. Lisa. Good morning, everybody. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting over there, and I'm thinking how blessed we are. Um, didn't Melissa do a great job? Isn't she awesome? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and pa Pastor Nathan, uh, man, he, he just is doing an awesome job uh, with those texts, setting things up. We are so blessed to have Pastor Nathan. Huh? And this band, I, I don't know if you know it, but they didn't hardly get any time to, to warm up. Uh, we, we had to have the uh, traditional service in here. And, and then the power went off, and yet they're awesome. So let's give thanks God for them as well, huh? Yeah, I, I just just sitting there thinking how blessed we are to have all these folks, the, the folks that, 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 are, that are allowing me to be online right now, and, and just all the way down the line. Uh, and we're blessed to have you. We're, we're so thankful that you're with us here in person or, or online. We thank God for you. We pray that you're blessed today uh, in, in worship and, and in the next few minutes as we turn our hearts uh, to God with, with the message. Uh, our, our series is, is Together. Um, and, and that's the whole idea. We were created to be together. We were created for relationship. Uh, already in the second chapter of, of Genesis, before there was ever sin in the world, God's saying it's not good for humankind to be alone, right? Uh, and and uh, the, the, the problem is that sin divides us, it separates us, it isolates us uh, so that we are alone. We're, we're alone, uh, we're, we're cut off from God, and, and, uh, and then we become alone because of the way we treat people around us. It's kind of like Adam. You know, he runs away from God, and God says, what have you done? This is the woman you gave me, man. Oh, man, he guy couldn't have been more alone, right? I, 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 always, I can't ever get over that text. I probably have said that to you too much, but I'm thinking, this guy is totally awesome alone. I mean, he's got a problem in the head, right? But that, that's what sin does to us. Uh, and yet God would give us this gift 
of being connected to him in, in, in Jesus and, and through him with one another, to being together. Uh, and, and we need it. it, it we, we can't be filled up in any other way. We can't have that, that hole in our soul filled up any other way uh, than uh, to, to be together with God and through him uh, with one another. And, and yes, there's, there's all kinds of, um, of challenges that we have, huh? And, and that's what this series is about. And, and those challenges have come to the forefront, I think, with COVID a little bit. We have all this time together in, in our homes, and, and, yet, and yet we're still frustrated because we find it even harder to be together sometimes. Uh, we put up walls, and, and uh, we frustrate each other and so forth. So that's what this series is all about. Uh, and what we're doing, we're, we're giving you a, 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 just a, something to use, a tool, uh, and it's our home huddles. Uh, and we've, every week we've asked you to do something. The first week, uh, that share there is uh, kind of share your highs and lows. Begin to make yourself known, right? Um, and, and we hope that you've done that a little bit. If not, your God's grace is brand new every day. It's like a resurrection. You can begin to do it. But we hope you've done that a little bit. Uh, and then this last week, it was the idea, the first week, it's like being present, and not, not just physically, but, but attending folks, being there with one another, listening to one another. Uh, nothing can happen in relationship unless you're there, right? <laughs> it, it's, it's like the, 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 the Super Bowl coach today, right? Uh, uh, if he's, he can have the greatest athlete in the world, and if the athlete is always injured, the number one thing, he's got to be there. He's got to be there if he's going to play, right? And, and if you ask any coach, right, he says the number one thing is availability. Well, if we're not available, we, we can't be together. Pretty, pretty simple, huh? Available in every way. And, that, that was the, and then the, the first week, the second week is, is be grace-filled. And this idea of grace uh, is, is not simply because of God's love. He forgives our sins, but he brings these gifts into our lives. Love and joy and peace and patience. The pizzazz in our lives, the salt in our life, right? Uh, and, and, and it's a new way to think of grace for some of us. Uh, and yet that's then what he empowers us to give away in our lives and to bring this salt this pizzazz into the lives of others. And, and we grow in that as we're in his word and as we talk about it, his spirit is with us. He promises, right? With two or three are gathered, I'm there uh, with my spirit. Uh, and, and also he, the, the word is called the sword of the spirit. So that's what we asked you to do this week, a little this last week. Um, just read a verse or two and talk about it. We gave you some one and others to use. Uh, we'll hope, we hope that you began to do that. Um, and, and again, you know, if not, you can, God's mercies are brand new every day. Uh, you, you can begin right now uh, and you can make a commitment uh, to beginning uh, to use this tool and, and these, uh, the, these things that are tied to this tool the, uh, to, to, um, to, to, to grow in this. Uh, today, the, the, the principle that we want to talk about is this, to, to be open or to be known. Uh, you know, people talk about body, body language, right? If, if I'm like this, am I open or closed? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty closed, huh? I had a, a friend of mine, and when his mom would get ticked off at us, she'd do this. You didn't even want to come close to mom, all right? When, when his friend's mom, I knew it was time for me to go home when she did this. That's being closed too, right? Being open is, is have a smile on your face, right? Actually, uh, to shake hands is kind of an open thing because you're completely exposed here, right? There's, there's ways that we can be open even with our posture, right? And show folks that we're open to be connected. But it's not just being open. We want today to focus on being known. I have a couple of questions for you. Here's the first one. Have you ever longed for someone to know you, really know you completely, to be fully known? You know, sometimes I write these things and I kind of go, uh, duh, right? But have you ever been there? So, sometimes we don't think about this stuff. It's what we all long for, Right? And here's a second one to a follow-up question. Have you ever felt the isolation of believing there is no one who really does know you? But when that happens in a marriage, it's really hard. Huh? When that happens if you're a child, it's really hard. If you don't think mom and dad knows you at all. Huh? And, and, and so it goes, these, this is part of the human condition. We long for someone to know us completely. And we feel this isolation when we don't think anyone does. There have been so many, as I thought about this, uh, just, just, just look, look at the world around us. Uh, how much poetry, how much prose, books, how much music and lyrics have been written saying, trying to say, this is who I am, will you understand me? 
or, or even, the, even painting and sculpture. But the artist is trying to, to say, this is who I am. It, it, it's so much part of, of, of the very essence of our being. We want someone to know us, and yet, and yet so often we don't think anyone does. The other problem here is that part of us really frightened of being known. Part of us puts up a big wall because we don't really think the other one will accept us if they really know us. I remember when I got in the ministry, it was a long time ago, but one of the first couples that came in uh, for marriage counseling, uh, I, I remember I met with him for a number of, of months, and, and, um, and I would give them homework to do so that they would talk to each other, you know, so that they would get to know each other, and they would never do it. And, and I remember we, we finally one day I sat down and I said, I think you guys are more frightened of being known than to stay where you're at not knowing each other, knowing it's self-destructive. And, and they say, you're right, but they still didn't change. They ended up getting a divorce because they were so frightened of being known by the other. We are frightened of being known because we look inside of ourselves and we think they won't like me if they know me. Huh? That's, that's the paradox. That's, that's our struggle. There's a contemporary Christian uh, song. It begins like this. Lie number one, you're supposed to have it all together. And when they ask you what you're, how you're doing, just smile and tell them, never better. Can you relate to that? I remember uh, a few years ago, I had like five bulging discs in my back, and I went to the doc, and the doc said, here, we want to do this surgery where we fuse them all. And I, and I had uh, all kinds of pain, so I was considering this thing, and he showed me the, the, the steel they wanted to put in my back. And it scared the heck out of heck. It scared the hell out of me, to be honest, right? And I remember I was supposed to call my son that night, uh, who's a nurse, Jeff, and I couldn't call him. And I realized I couldn't call him because even though he was thirty years old, he shouldn't know that Dad's frightened of anything. I didn't want him to know me. I didn't want him to know I was scared because he's not supposed to know that, right? And when he called me the next night and he said, hey, Dad, what, what went on? Why, why didn't you call me? In, in a flash of wisdom, I, I shared it with him. Why? Because you're not supposed to know your old man's scared. And I'll never forget, he, he kind of laughed and said, Dad, it's okay. You know, when we call the lie, good things happen. Here, this song goes on. It says this, lie number two, everybody's life is perfect except yours. Have you ever been there? Huh? Everybody's perfect. So keep your messes and your wounds and your secrets safe with you behind closed doors. Because everybody's perfect but you, right? We have this need of human beings to be known. And yet we're so frightened of being known, we shut it down. And we suffer, all of us. Huh? Goes like this then. Truth be told, the truth is rarely told. So this paradox, something that we have to have to be complete and whole, to be open and to be known, we shut it down and we stuff it. Where do we get, how do we get out of this, huh? God comes to us. The psalmist, he, he expresses it this way. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you read the word with me and you know me. This isn't a knowing about, this is knowing me. Knowing everything about me. And he goes on, he says this, you know when I sit and when I rise, but more than that, you perceive, that's quite a word, isn't it? You perceive my thoughts from afar, every little thought he knows. You discern my going out and my lying down, Where, however I'm going out or lying down, whatever I'm about with my life, uh, um, mentally, uh, uh, spiritually, psychologically, you are there. You know these things. You are familiar with all my ways. That's wonderful, right? Or does it make you a little uneasy? How could, I love what Pastor Nathan said. This was David who wrote this. The adulterer and the murderer. How could he write this? In Exodus, there's this verse. And God is revealing who he is. Uh, just before this with Moses, he has um, revealed that his name is Yahweh. 
right? And Yahweh means I am that I am. And, and, and the idea behind that is I don't change. Like Ezekiel, I'm the Lord, I change not. And so this goes like this, the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh, the one who doesn't change, the one who is the same all the time, no matter what. Yahweh, Yahweh, who is he? The compassionate. That word means he hurts for us. Not just yesterday, not just in the moment, not just tomorrow, but always, this is God, Yahweh, I change not, the compassionate and gracious God, full of this love, undeserved love, not just yesterday, not if you earn it, not if you don't, whatever it might, always, this is Yahweh, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, and abounding in love and faithfulness. You know, that word abounding, I don't know why, but I always get a picture in my head. I had a German shepherd growing up, and we go to the field, and, and she would just bound all around, right? And, and then sometimes you turn around and she'd slap herself on you, almost knock you over. Abounding. Sloshing all around you. This is God and he never changes. Abounding in love and faithfulness. I think I, I learned what being faithful was all about very young for my brother. I had a great older brother. He was four years older than I was. And, and that's a big, big age uh, gap when you're young. And I remember he was in the eighth grade which is an interesting time in life. I, I was in the fourth grade. And one Saturday, all of his buddies came and they wanted to play Sandlaw football. And they couldn't see me. I was kind of hidden in the house. And they said to him, I'll, you know, leave that run of your brother at home and we'll just go ourselves. And I remember he said to them, and he didn't know I was there. He said, if he doesn't go, I don't go. Faithfulness. That's what I learned from him. He was always there for me. Faithfulness. And this is Yahweh. He doesn't change. Maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, uh, and sin. This is Yahweh. Not just once in a while. Not just when you jump through the hoop. Not just when you earn it. But always towards you. It goes on. It says this. I'm sorry. This Old Testament reality was stated again and again and again. If you read through the Old Testament, it's constantly saying, Yahweh, Yahweh, the compassionate and gracious God, so to it's, it, it repeats itself hundreds of times. And it finally slides into who Jesus is in the New Testament. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only who is at the Father's side, He has made Him known. For you and me... We see this Yahweh fully revealed in Jesus, this one who is compassionate and loving and kind and forgiving and who is Yahweh in human flesh, the one who never changes. This is why the psalmist could write what he wrote, could be known by God because he knew God like this. Go ahead. The song, the, the song goes on, and, and it says, this is a contemporary Christian song, and it says this, I say I'm fine, yeah, I'm fine, hey, I'm fine, but I'm not. I'm broken. And when it's out of control, I say it's under control, but it's not. And you know it. He's talking to God here, see, in this stanza. God knows it all, huh? And then he goes on, he says this, I don't know why it's so hard to admit it when being honest is the only way to fix it. There's no failure, no fall, there's no sin you don't already know, so let the truth be told. That's what the psalmist was trying to express. Huh? He closes it like this. He says, can I really stand here unashamed? Amazing statement. Are you ashamed for anything that you've ever done or thought? Or haven't done? All the shame was nailed on Jesus at the cross. God knows it all. And, and, and he wants to be known by you and to know that, and to have you known by him. Can I really stand here under shame knowing that your love for me won't change? Well, God, if that's really true, then let the truth be told. This is the foundation, you see. For receiving this gift of God to be known. So when the psalmist says these words, Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. This is the God he knows. 
this one that the songwriter was singing about, the, 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 the one that, that, that Moses knew, the one that we know in Jesus. You know when I sit, when I rise, you perceive my thoughts so far, you discern my going out, my lying down, you are familiar with all my ways. This God that loves you like an ocean, right? I am who you say I am, this God, huh? That's how the psalmist knows. And he goes on, he says this, you hem me in behind me before you, have laid your hand upon me, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Wherever I am, wherever I go, your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. How can he say this? How can he know this? How can he rejoice in this? This is too wonderful for him. Why? Because he knows the Yahweh God who never changes, and he is the one whose love abounds and whose grace abounds and who's always faithful. He ends it like this, for you created my inmost being, you started me. You started me, you wove me together. And then he says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be, and you're with me every day and into eternity. Your hands hold me, and the hands bear the marks of the nails. This is, this is the power source to receive the gift of being known by God and, and, and to know Him and to give this gift away in our lives. How do we live in this, though? How, how do we practice it? Uh, I, I think one clue is that the Bible says to pray without ceasing. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean like we're supposed to quit our jobs? And, and just sit down in our living rooms and pray all day? Is that what it means? Or maybe we quit our jobs, we sell our houses, and we have food brought in, and we come to church and we, here in the building, and we just pray 24-7. You think that's what it means? Pray without ceasing. Is that, is that what it means, you think? No, it's a state of mind. It's a state of being. It's the state of living out the reality that I'm known by God and rejoicing in that, and then giving that away. It's like uh, Augustine, a, a Christian who lived about 1,600 years ago, he said this, Prayer is the breath of the soul. It's how we live. It's the reality in which we live. It's, it's being known by God and knowing Him and, and, and opening ourselves up to be known by others because we are broken, but we're healed in Jesus Christ. huh? And the truth can be known, and in that truth we connect with each other. Go ahead. We have uh, this tool that we've given you to... To, to, to share uh, your, your lives with each other, to, to, to be present, right? To, 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 to be grace-filled, to read and to talk. And then we put down pray. Prayer here is not to praying about. Prayer means here opening your soul to the other as you're opening your soul to God. There's been a lot, much study done on this, and, and when a husband and wife pray together before God on a regular basis, there's amazing stuff that happens because it's so personal. And you're bearing the very depth of your being, not only to God, but, but to one another. And so this week we would, um, we would ask you to pray. Certainly attend, be there, share your highs and lows, be in the Word and talk about it, be grace-filled, but... Pray with one another. Be open to one another. It's a powerful, a powerful tool, a principle in our lives. Go ahead. Jesus gives us this example. And the night he was betrayed, the very next night he would die. So he's, he's going to Gethsemane. He's going to pray there. Remember, he sweats blood. I mean, this is, this is a, a, a time in his life that, that's horrible. And he takes Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he begins to be sorrowful and troubled. So Peter, James, and John goes with him, and he allows them to see him sorrowful and troubled. This is the Messiah. This is the king of kings. This is the rabbi. This is the teacher. This is the one they followed. He allows them. It's like, it's like, boy, if he can do that, I can sure tell my son Jeff that I'm scared as heck, huh? And we can open our lives to each other if Jesus can do this. He allows him to see that he's sorrowful and troubled. And it's like he says he wants them to get it because he talks to them. He says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Have you ever said that to your husband or wife? My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow. I'm in a big grave here. 
I don't know how to get out of here. Have you ever said that to somebody when, when you're in that place? Jesus wasn't afraid to. And then he said, stay here. And he went just a short distance and he prayed. He prayed so that they could hear him, open his heart to God. And this is what he says. My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Messiah, the rabbi, the teacher, the one they followed. And he opens his heart and lets them hear his prayer that if there's any other way to go, he would go that way. What an example, huh? example to be known. Not only, not only is it good for the one being known, it's also good for those that know you. The disciples had this wonderful opportunity to know Jesus. And, and they, they were there for a while, they opened their eyes, but, but then they went to sleep. And they missed the opportunity. That's what sin does, it, it puts us to sleep. Jesus would give you this gift today to know him and, and then through him to know those around you. And he empower you by his spirit never to go to sleep. James, it says, is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray. This is all in the context of being together. Uh, Jesus said, yeah, you can go in your, uh, your, your closet to pray, but in the New Testament, more and more, more, for the most part, people prayed together. Why? Because they saw the depths of their soul. They, they, they gave them to God and they gave them to each other. And this goes on, it says this, therefore confess your sins to each other. Yeah, I'm broken. Huh? You bring it out and you can be honest because Jesus Christ has come. Yeah, I'm broken, and I don't measure up. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed in body, soul, mind, and spirit as you're there for one another, as you're open to each other. Huh? Pray for one another. Let God and one another see the depths of your soul, and great things can happen. We're giving a few one another's every, uh, every week, right, um, to use as you come together. So the first one, of course, is confess your sins to one another, pray for one another. Here's another one. Uh, speak truth to one another. Yeah, I'm broken. Huh? Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah, I don't. Speak truth to one another. Go ahead. Here's another one. Don't lie to one another. Don't, don't, don't cover it up. Don't, don't, don't put makeup on it. Huh? Let yourself be known to the other. Encourage and, and build up one another. How do you do that? Well, you know the other one. And when you know the other one, it's a lot easier to encourage them and build them up. And finally, be hospitable to each other. I, I love this in, in what we're talking about. We, we always think of getting the house looking nice, right? So, so that you can have somebody over. That's not what this means. Be hospitable to one another. Put your arms open and wide. Be there to know the other. Put your arms as wide as the cross because that's how wide the arms of Jesus are for you. Be open, uh, be known. Uh, this week, take a moment to pray with one another uh, as you open your life and your soul to God and to each other. Will you pray with me? Father, we have this great need to be known uh, and yet we're not sure uh, that you or anyone else will like us, and so we stuff it, and we lie, and we don't face it, and we don't allow ourselves to be open and known to anyone. We pray that you would touch us with your spirit, that you would whisper in our hearts that you know us perfectly, and, 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 that, and that you receive us, and that you have compassion for us uh, when, when, when we fall, and in our struggles, and our weakness, and, and, and you have grace, and you're faithful to us always, and then, Lord, empower us to allow ourselves to be known by those around us and to know others and to give them what you give us. 
to be compassionate and open and loving and kind and faithful and gracious. Now we pray in your name. Amen. We continue our worship as we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. We stand and we lift our voices. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. Uh, it's at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, you guys can go ahead and have a seat. Uh, and uh, congratulations uh, to those of you that just passed the confirmation test and remembered the part that we skipped. That was fantastic. Good job. Uh, those of you that didn't quite get it, that's okay because I almost messed it up too. Anyways, um, what a great thing it is that we have a God that, that knows us and, and completely understands us. And it's because of that grace towards us that, that we come to worship together and we praise this God for what he's given us. And it's out of that that, that we want to share this message with others because it's a message that every single person on earth needs to hear, is that they have a God that knows them and loves them. And, and so I invite you to come with me in a word of prayer right now as we pray that God would uh, bless these offerings, uh, that he would use us and, and what we're doing here to touch the hearts and the lives of more people by the power of Jesus. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are completely known. And that in being completely known that you still love us. As Paul wrote in Romans, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is a message that this world, this broken and fallen world needs to hear. And so Lord, we pray that these offerings that we receive this day uh, would be transformed, translated into more people worshiping you and praising you because of the work that you're doing through us. Gracious Lord, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's a couple of different ways to give. Uh, you can text uh, St. Matthew Rockland to 77977. Uh, you can mail a check to 3785 Placer Corporate Drive, Suite 600, which, by the way, is where we're located. If you are joining us online and haven't been here yet in person, that's where you can find us. And as uh, the vaccine gets out, as things open up, well, we look forward to, to meeting you and seeing you face to face, which, by the way, I'm Pastor Nathan. I didn't introduce myself earlier. And, and so glad to have you joining us online. And uh, I'm looking at the wrong camera in the back. Welcome. Welcome to those of you joining us online. And then the final way you can give is by visiting our webpage where uh, these two lovely young ladies who are going to be taking over on the announcements in just a moment will tell you about the other things that you can find there. And you go to St. Matthew Rockland uh, slash give dot com slash give and that'll get you there and then we'll have a couple other announcements about uh, other things coming your way this week i'm just going to keep doing announcements so i can be called young every week <laughs> i'm loving this becca it's i <laughs> think it's a really important day today and it i'm is. not sure if you and it's not because it's super bowl guys why is it so important yeah, the super bowl secondary today secondary primary it's pastor brad's birthday yeah <laughs> All right, and you know what? Since we don't have our video today, I think we can sing happy birthday to I him. Think we all can. right, so I let's all should. join in singing happy birthday to Pastor Brad. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor Brad. Happy birthday to you. All right. You thank us all the time, but we have so much to be thankful for by having you as our leader and God granting uh, us you. So thank you. Um, what do we have going on? All right. So a couple things coming up. Ash Wednesday is February 17th. We're going to have a couple things going on that day. 5.30, 6 o'clock, and 6.30, we're going to have family communion. And then at 7 o'clock will be worship. Um, our early communion, our first communion uh 
folks will be doing First Communion at that, so that'll be really exciting. Um, and we've also talked about a couple different ways that we're doing the imposition of ashes to make sure that everyone is safe and comfortable. Um, so we'll have pastors doing that during the family communion. Families will be doing that to one another. And then we'll even have an option for you to do the ashes on your own forehead if you're more comfortable with that. So feel free to come. We'd love to have you here. Um, and you will be able to stay as comfortable and safe as you would like to during that service. Um, all of the Lent services on Wednesdays following that will be online only at 7 p.m. Also, next week, if you're here on Sunday, but you're not going to be able to make it here on Wednesday night, I just may have cross tattoos that look like ashes that you can take home. Yeah, you will be able to take those next week as well. Um, we have a really exciting program coming up here, and it's called Financial Peace University. Has anybody taken part of that here? All right. We've got a few people who have, and I saw two people way in the back raise their hands, and I'm going to embarrass them greatly because we don't have their video. If you could stand up. This is Jeff and Shay Crumdick, and they are going to be leading Finan Financial Peace University for us. They went through the program. It's touched their lives in great ways, and they want to touch your lives with that as well. That is a program that is going to start the first Tuesday in March, and it runs for nine weeks. Um, and so we're going to post a video later to our social media pages so you can see and meet Jeff and Shay a little bit more and learn how to sign up. Um, and then we'll have their video for the, uh, you next week as well. Yes. The first three um, people or couples that sign up will get to go for free. So a little incentive to get signed up right away. And you'll need to contact either the church office or go to stmatthewrockland.com slash FPU. And Jeff and Shay's email is on there. You need to email them in order to get the free code. So the first three people that email them will get in for free. Otherwise, there is a nominal fee because you get so much software and everything with it to help you through this process. It is in person only because um, it's a great, it's, it's something that you need to be in the room and work with other people and yourself on. And it'll be masked here in the community room. Yep. So very exciting. Absolutely. All right. I think that's that it for announcements. It. So we're going to go into our time of prayer together with Pastor Nathan. I want to share with you um, some prayer requests. Some that even uh, just came in at the beginning of the service uh, this morning. Uh, a pastor that used to be the pastor at... Um, uh, Redeemer down in Fresno, Pastor Carl Rev, uh, Winken, Winniken. I know how to pronounce that. I lived in Winniken Hall. How did I mess that up? Pastor Reverend <laughs> Carl Winniken, uh, who used to be the pastor at uh, Redeemer in Fresno, has a brain tumor, is now on life support. And so uh, pray for him and his family. Uh, continue to pray for, for Rod Gaines. Uh, we pray for Taylee, and um, this is one that's, that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, she's having surgery on Ash Wednesday, and it reminds me that back in 2017, that's when Elise got diagnosed heading into March 1st, Ash Wednesday. And so I uh, hope uh, with you, uh, you'll join me in praying for them. I mean, that's, that's tough stuff that they're dealing with. And so we lift them up as she has surgery, and they're praying for answers and healing. Uh, we pray for Shirley, uh, Lacey Lucero's uh, grandmother, who's still struggling with the loss of her husband. Uh, pray for Elise Brooks as she continues to wait for surgery. Pray for safe travel and comfort for all of Mary Williams' family as they travel to the funeral for her husband's mother, Sonny. Uh, pray for Darlene, a friend of Donna and Paul Meyer, as she recovers from eye surgery. We continue to pray for Maddie Devereaux, uh, daughter and friend of Aaron uh, Bartuco, as she continues to battle against cancer. We pray for Joni. Uh, we come before God with thanksgiving for the healing she's received and pray that her pain would continue to be eased. We pray for Chris Dancy, a friend of Nancy Hansen, who's battling cancer. We pray for the Cleary family, uh, friends and neighbors of the Hintzes, uh, who lost their house and all their belongings in a fire uh, this past week. And we pray for the adult children of Patricia Lennon, um, including Nancy Hansen, as they make end-of-life decisions for their mother who has Alzheimer's. We have for Connie Burns, a friend of Lorna Sandberg, who's fighting uh, leukemia. With that, I invite you to stand as we come before our God in prayer. Powerful spirit, you search us and you know us. Uh, you intercede for us when we don't know which words to pray. And so, Lord, we ask that you would give us w courage, that you would give us words to come before you and the Father. And that you would help us to see the people that you've placed in our lives to walk with us on the mountaintops and through the valleys. And remind us of your grace and your faithfulness. Lord, we lift up to you all those who are struggling with 
health concerns and issues. Connie, Chris, Joni, Maddie, Darlene, Elise, Taylor, Rod Gaines, and Reverend Carl Winkin. Lord, we ask that you would bring healing, that you would bring comfort, that you would walk with them through this dark valley, and that you would provide people to journey along with them. Lord, we also pray for all those who are mourning and making difficult decisions. Lord, we ask that you would be with the family of Patricia Lennon, that you would be with the Cleary family as they figure out the next steps and, and mourn the loss of, of an old life. And Lord, we ask that you would provide a way for them to move forward and that you would provide for their needs. Gracious Lord, we ask that you would be with Mary Williams' family as they travel. Keep them safe. Give them your comfort and your peace in this difficult hour. Gracious Lord, we ask that you would continue to be at work in our hearts and our lives and our families that you would build us up in love, that you would help us to be open to one another, that you would help us to be vulnerable for one another, that our families would realize that our strength is not in us but in you. Help us to attest and proclaim your love and your faithfulness and help us to grow in our trust of you. Gracious Lord, we pray all these things as well as those that you know that we need. Lord, we pray coming to you as our Father, as you taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This week, may you know the love of God the Father who completely knows you. May you experience the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the people that he has placed in your lives to speak words of comfort and grace. And may the power of the Spirit give you words to speak that make you open to those around you that they may see Jesus' love for them in you. Go in the peace of God. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Jesus' name.